Get Patricia Gibson, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'm very pleased to speak in this important debate today um, about product safety and fire risk in residential premises. And I offer my thanks to the Honourable Member for Poplar and Limehouse for bringing this debate forward. We've heard today that there clearly is a problem, and we know this because electrical faults and accidents cause three quarters of all house fires in Scotland alone, according to Electrical Safety First, and more than five fires a day across England alone caused by faulty white goods. Certainly, as we've heard, we need a better recall system for faulty or potentially faulty goods. Currently, it would seem that the system is not working. The success rates of recalls is rarely more than 10 to 20 per cent. And this is despite the huge risks of electrical shock, fire or even death that faulty electrical items can too often present. And this tells us that thousands of dangerous items remain in unsuspecting homes across the United Kingdom. The recall system across the United Kingdom, therefore, has to be improved. As the Honourable Member for Hammersmith pointed out, this debate is about much more than one product or one company. And the issue, the issue is much wider than that. And the Honourable Member's comments for, for, for Nowsley's about cabling has been well made, and I'm sure the Minister was listening carefully. What I think from what I've heard today is that we can all agree that there must be a single publicly accessible register of product recalls which will allow consumers to be aware of products in their homes which could be putting them at risk. If people can find this important information all in one place, produced independently, full, clear and transparent, then I'm sure it will be trusted. Such a one-stop shop for recalls and safety notices where consumers can check their products, report incidents and seek advice will over time save lives. And I know that such a, a one-stop shop was launched by the UK government last year, but it has been criticised as being difficult to navigate and doesn't contain all product recall information in one place, which, as I understand it, caused some confusion when consumers are, are directed to other sites where recalls are listed, none of which were comprehensive. And I know that the fire service has been pressing for this one-stop shop so that it's easy for consumers to use and it's clear and comprehensive. Indeed, which has campaigned for an end to the current fragmented system and the establishment of a national body to take responsibility for ensuring manufacturers keep households safe and ensure dangerous products are not in people's homes due to the risk they so clearly pose? And this idea has been mooted, was mooted by Lynn Falls Woods in 2016, who was commissioned to undertake a review of consumer product recall, as we've heard this afternoon. But her findings were dismissed by the UK government on the grounds of cost. Since this, many of us have feared that the government has failed to comprehend the scale of reform required for a reliable product safety system. But I'm sure today the minister will reassure us on that point. We also need more education about the risks associated with faulty, faulty electrical items. Electrical Safety First has revealed that nearly 2 million adults have knowingly ignored a recall notice, citing reasons such as inconvenience, reluctance to manage without the product itself, and a real underestimation of the risks associated with continuing to use the product. And it should be noted, and I think it was mentioned earlier in the debate, that there does seem to be a reluctance among some consumers to register products as they don't wish to hand over their personal data in case it's used for marketing purposes. And I would say to the Minister today, surely we can tackle that issue by forbidding companies from using information from product registration for marketing opportunities. That surely can't be beyond the wit of this Parliament. In addition, product recall campaigns must be more innovative and creative about how they attract the public's attention and penetrate the public's consciousness much more deeply. And I also think we can all agree that the lack of a national body responsible for consumer product safety means that the current system is necessarily fragmented. And I have to say that with Brexit on the horizon, overhauling the UK's consumer enforcement regime is an even greater priority before even greater stress is loaded onto an already weak system. 
Brexit may be an opportune time to review the regulatory regime and address its weaknesses. And I hope that again the Minister can offer his reassurance on that point. The challenges are real. Ensuring product safety when these products are coming from a wider range of countries with different levels of product safety regulation and compliance checks makes this matter much more complex for an already weak system. So we really do need a new national body with responsibility for consumer safety before Brexit happens. Domestic electrical fires sadly are increasing and as we've heard this afternoon, um, the most recent and tragic example we have seen of that was the Grenfell Tower fire. The process of review has been ongoing for almost three years and we still wait for substantial and meaningful change that will help protect consumers, as the Honourable Lady for Swansea East so eloquently pointed out. And as the Honourable Member for Poplar and Limehouse has pointed out, a working group on product recalls and safety to build on the work started by the Recall Review Steering Group finally published its report in July of this year. However, its recommendations do not present the fundamental reform needed to fix the broken system of product recall. And I am persuaded that the only meaningful way forward and, and is very pressing as Brexit looms ahead, and that is for the establishment of this national body responsible for consumer product recall. And I really don't think the clamour for this can be disregarded any longer. Now, and to pick up the point made for the Honourable Member for South End West, um, who was, he might be interested to know that in Scotland, um, statutory guidance has been given under the Housing Scotland Act, which imposes a new duty upon landlords to carry out electrical safety inspections and that came on, on installations, uh, fixtures and fittings, and that came into force in December 2015. And I know that the Minister will want to look at that carefully because in England currently there's only an expectation of safety. Um, so she may wish to consider imposing a similar duty on landlords in England. Um, and I know that um, also concerned the member for South End West and the, the Honourable Lady. Before I conclude, Madam Chair, I should also mention the dangers of counterfeit goods. And I know that this was very eloquently spelled out by the member for Swansea, Swansea East. Um, and this is important, particularly as Christmas approaches. Um, of course, everyone loves a bargain. But counterfeit goods are now so easily available across the internet. And they are, these goods, as we know, are not put through the same vigorous safety checks as legitimate items and are often extremely dangerous, with consumers often having no notion of how much danger electrical counterfeit goods pose to them and their families. So we have a job of work to do in highlighting these dangers to the often very unsuspecting consumer who is simply looking for what may look like a bargain, but which in the end could cost them more than they could possibly imagine. And I'm keen to hear what the Minister has to say today, but I'm particularly keen to hear her thoughts on plans for a national body responsible for consumer product safety.